how did I come to stand here in front of you all today? Well, I suppose the story starts back in the late 90s when three bike mad uh, students first met at Bath University, namely myself, Ben Farmer and Ben Arnold. We spent far too much time riding bikes and if we weren't riding bikes, we were talking about bikes and about dreaming how one day we would make the best possible bikes. Obviously that dream always stuck in the back of our minds, uh, but we each went down our own separate career paths. And then it was in 2012 that uh, Ben Farmer had, shall we say, the light bulb moment when he came up with the original concept for what we're now doing. And it, that, that concept came off the back of his experience in both the composites world and in the world of additive manufacturing. Um, I should say now that when I say additive manufacturing, there's no doubt a load of you in the audience will refer to that as 3D printing. Uh, but Andy, another person will come in the story later on, will tell me off for calling it 3D printing. So I'll call it additive manufacturing for now. Um, so yeah, he had those backgrounds and he came up with this concept of how those two areas could be combined to make this ultimate bike that we'd always dreamt of. Now, right from the start, he knew that it really heavily featured additive manufacturing. And although he had some background in that field, he knew that to make it really happen, we needed to have someone who knew absolutely everything there is to know about additive manufacturing. And whilst he was working at Airbus, he met Andy Hawkins, who is the, the final of the four founders. Uh, and we approached him, told him what he, uh, our idea, and he, he was totally up for joining us. So that was, that was where we were in 2012. So at that point, we had an expert in composites in the shape of Ben Farmer, who had headed up the composites development at Airbus. We had an expert in additive manufacturing, it was Andy Hawkins, uh, who led that field at Renault for their Formula One team uh, when they were winning. <laughs> and, uh, and then we had Ben Arnold, who's an experienced precision engineer. engineer. And then myself. Uh, my background is that I've always worked in the cycle industry in one form or another, whether that be in bike shops, uh, as a mechanic for on the World Cup circuit for downhill teams and uh, over a decade as technical editor at Dirt magazine. Um, so I've seen the cycle industry from a lot of different angles. I've seen what goes wrong with bikes, what works with bikes, what customers want, what they need. And so I feel we had, we had a great uh, combination of skills to, to make this concept a reality and to produce a really great product. It was one of our main ethos, though, right from the start, was that we wanted to do things properly, to do sound engineering and not cut corners. Uh, everything had to be done for a reason. And part of that is that to do that, you need the right people. Uh, and one of the aspects of a great modern mountain bike is the suspension design. Now, we could have had a go at designing that ourselves. Uh, lots of other companies do. But like I said, we wanted to make sure it was done to the very highest level. So that led me to contact a chap called Dave Weagle, who sadly can't be here today. He's on the other side of the world where he lives and couldn't, couldn't make it, unfortunately. Uh, but we contacted him because he is arguably the world's best and most successful uh, suspension designer for mountain bikes. He's uh, designed for lots of companies. So I approached him with our concept, and luckily he loved it too, thought it had huge potential. Uh, so yeah, he got on board as well. So he has developed a new suspension platform for this bike that I will reveal in a second. Uh, so that's another area of expertise that we brought in. Obviously, there are lots of things that go to make this dream bike that we, that we were dreaming of. So one aspect is the suspension. Another crucial aspect is the construction. We see this as an area that isn't being done quite right. There's a lot of companies claiming that it's the greatest, latest technology, and there's all sorts of swoops and curves and things like that. We, we just want it to be honest, truthful engineering. So you'll see in a minute, we are, we are quite different. 
but the, our use of additive manufacturing has enabled us to use sound engineering practices, uh, using materials and processes in the right places where they make sense. So that's one aspect, getting construction right. The other key thing, which is perhaps even more important than the whole, everything else, is that we believe a bike should fit. And this is where I think it's crazy how the cycle industry currently is, is that there are companies offering supposedly these perfect bikes, these high-end bikes that you're paying a fortune for. And because they're now made in carbon and they're restricted to moulds, which are very expensive, they're limited to like three sizes. Some, some companies even do two sizes. Yet their customers come in thousands of shapes and sizes. And you're putting all that effort into making a bike that's supposedly no compromise, yet you're compromising on one of the most important things, and that's that it doesn't fit you. Yes, you might possibly get one that fits you if you're very lucky. But yeah, we, so we believe that every bike should be made specifically for a customer. And our concept for construction, using additive manufacturing and carbon, has enabled us to tick both the construction, doing the construction properly, and doing it custom, both at the same time. So that's what it's allowed us to do. So once we had the, we got to the stage where we thought, yeah, this concept is really going to work. We then got to about 2014, which is when we officially uh, registered the company. So it was officially born Robot Bike Co. Since then, we've been testing, building prototypes, developing, refining, and we've now got to the stage where we're at now. So enough of me giving you the background. We shall unveil now. Help some Paul. So, those of you who know about your, your bikes, you probably immediately see that it does look quite different to sort of the other high-end offerings in the market. Uh, and going back to what I was saying about using materials in the right places and techniques and construction, you'll notice that all the complex areas of the bicycle are made with the uh, titanium parts using additive manufacturing uh, and then all those complex parts are joined with our proprietary carbon tubing. The reason for using carbon in those areas is that carbon is best suited to simple loads and simple shapes. It's when you start trying to use carbon in these complex areas that you can run into problems and if you've seen failures on other bikes it's normally in those complex areas so in those complex areas with complex shapes and complex loads we've used metal titanium uh, which is most suited and then joined with carbon the added benefit of us using additive manufacturing uh, for the, all these joints is that we have got a unique double lap shear joint joining mechanism uh, that means that the, the tube is basically bonded on both the uh, outside and the inside. Uh, that gives the most robust bonding uh, practice possible uh, and very good against peel forces, which is a common weakness of, of bonding. Uh, so, yeah, we wouldn't be able to produce those double lap joints using any other technique, really. Uh, so that's what we've done. Aside from those, we've also got the DW, uh, DW6 suspension system. The main benefit of that uh, is that by using this design, we've been able to isolate the three main uh, suspension characteristics. Uh, so the leverage ratio, the way it pedals, and the way it brakes. Uh, with most suspension designs, well, almost all suspension designs, if you tweak one thing, like the leverage ratio, it affects another part of the suspension characteristics. Uh, with this, they're all independent. So along with the additive manufacturing, we've been able to do really small changes and work out what is the absolute optimum performance. Uh, so yeah, the, the two have combined really well, suspension design and our production techniques. So yeah, anyway, enough of me talking about it. Let's uh, watch it in action. <laughs> 